Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Um, if you'd like to join via video, it would be super friendly if we could all see each other's faces from wherever we are in the United States. So feel free to share your video and just keep your audio off if you'd like. It uh, makes me feel less like I'm talking to myself in a basement. <laughs> this looks like we've got Steven, Steven, Kathy, Kathy Fevo is joining us. Hey, Kathy, I'm glad you're here. We've got Rachel. <laughs> Who else? We've got Aichu. Aichu Ashi. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go around a little bit. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Looks like we've got James Thorne joining us. Hello. Who else do we have? Welcome, everybody. Heather Hooper. Welcome, Heather Hooper. Glad you're here. Hey, JD, I'm so glad you're joining us. This is great. <laughs> um, I'm going to start the chat window. I'm going to open that up. And maybe just so we can kind of know who's here, you can just type in your name and then uh, where you're joining from. Um, I'm Kelsey Derringer. I'll do a better introduction later. Um, but I'm, I'm uh, videoing in from Pittsburgh, PA. So maybe in the chat window, you want to say where you're videoing in from. All right, joining from Hampton, Virginia. Wonderful, I was just in Hampton. When was I in Hampton? June or July, I think. I was doing a workshop there with teachers. So I'm glad you're here. Nice to meet you, I too. Kathy's coming in from Verona, right nearby and right nearby Pittsburgh. How about uh, JD and Steven and Heather? Where are you guys all coming in from, James? You can type in the chat window off to the side there. Looks like Janelle's coming in from Indiana. Welcome, welcome, Indiana. Oh, okay, so you're in, you're in under James Thorne, but your name's Janelle. Awesome, nice to meet you, Janelle, I'm glad you're here. Wonderful, Indianapolis, great. And I know I met some of you guys at, um, at FETC. I know I met JD there. Um, I may have met some of the rest of you at FETC as well. And some people joining us today will have a hummingbird kit. And we're actually going to learn to program that thing today. Some of you may not have a kit in front of you, and that's fine too. But we are going to take a look at how to program that with an, uh, an iPad or a smartphone. So if you have an iPad or a smartphone handy, go ahead and grab that out because we're actually going to use that to program today. We're going to put an app on your phone. I'll actually put that. Uh, I'll, I'll get to that in just a minute. But um, in the chat window, it's just now four o'clock on the Eastern Coast, so I'll go ahead and uh, load this in there. Um, in the chat window, part of why I was having you guys introduce yourselves there was so that I could make sure you could find it, um, because I just shared a link to a Google Doc in that chat window, and that's gonna be a collaborative Google Doc. Welcome. Um, and that collaborative Google Doc, I'll continue to share that in the, um, in the chat window, because if you just joined, you won't see that, that link. But that Google Doc, you can open that up, and um, it has all sorts of really great um, links and some great videos. Um, it's got our agenda on there today. So everything that I'm going to do and talk about during our webinar today is referenced in that Google Doc so that you don't have to be writing stuff down. That's a, a handy little, um, little thing for you to be, uh, to be using um, and a reference point for you. Um, so welcome everybody. Since it's just now 4.01, I'll go ahead and introduce myself and start things off. Um, my name is Kelsey Derringer, and I am the Professional Development Coordinator for Bird Brain Technologies. So that means that I travel around the country and I teach teachers coding and robotics. Um, those are teachers K-12, to English teachers, computer science teachers, math teachers, um, special education teachers, gifted and talented teachers, all kinds of teachers, I work with all of them, to um, figure out how to incorporate 
coding and robotics into what they're doing. And also, I really have a big focus on equity as well, of, of how do we get um, technology in the hands of more and more diverse students. Um, so, on, uh, I think a, a great thing for us to do is to maybe start off with a little bit of an icebreaker. So to get us to that point, I'm just gonna show you this Google Doc that we're all on here. Hey, I see uh, uh, everybody's little symbols up at the top. Looks like we've got seven people on this Google Doc. Um, so on this Google Doc, we've got our little agenda there. And there's also an icebreaker. Um, so if you guys wanna click on menti.com, and then if you wanna type in these three numbers, 80, 93, 75, it's gonna ask you a question. And the question is, why do you think it's important that we teach computer science and robotics? As in like, what brought you to this webinar? What brought you to this space? And it's gonna ask you for your top two answers. And as you guys answer that question, it's gonna fill in right here on the screen. So we're gonna to get to see how many people believe different things. So uh, you can use your smartphone or you can go there on your computer and go to uh, menti.com. Here we go. If you go to menti.com and you answer in those numbers, there we go. First person um, answered, hey, look at there. We've got all kinds of answers coming in. And if you've just joined us, I will put our Google Doc link back in the chat window. You'll want to open up that Google Doc because it's got all sorts of really important resources um, for us to reference today. So you'll open up that Google Doc, and then you can also go to menti.com. We're doing a little icebreaker now about why we think it's important to teach computer science. So looks like our, our biggest answer so far is technological, social, and scientific innovation. So we think it's important to teach CS because it will help us solve the world's problems. I think that's a really valid answer. Looks like another pop, uh, popular one is personal joy, because it's fun. I actually hear that from a lot of teachers all over the country that like, I wanna do, CS in my class because it's really engaging to the kids because they really like it. And that's, that's never the only reason we want to do things in class, otherwise we would be making glitter slime every day. But uh, that's not a bad reason to do things in, in school because it's fun and because it's engaging. Um, it looks like uh, competencies and literacies is also a big one. So building 21st century skills like persistence and grit, um, communication, collaboration. I think coding and robotics is a really great way to teach those things. And then also some people uh, are here for the same reason that I am, which is equity. Um, my background, I'm a middle school and high school English teacher. That's what my certifications are in. And the way I came to computer science was um, I was teaching a girls only after school STEM program for fourth through eighth grade girls in inner city Pittsburgh. And I wanted my girls to have access to the same opportunities opportunities for technology, but also opportunities for like joy and creativity. And I wanted them to feel as welcomed to that conversation and that table as all of the, um, the kids in the, in the suburbs and the, the boys and the, the white kids. And I wanted them, my girls, to feel as entitled to that as um, other students across the country. So um, I think that's a, a great place to start to think about what brought us here. Why, why did we decide to um, get interested in computer science? So um, on that note, um, I mentioned that some people here have a kit in front, in front of them, and your kit probably looks something like this. This is the Hummingbird Robotics Kit, and if you slide the things out and open it up, you'll see it's got a bunch of stuff in there. <laughs> and all of this stuff is, um, looks like a bunch of wires, and if you're not used to doing much with robotics, this may be a little bit overwhelming or confusing as to like what is all of this stuff in here, but I have a really easy way to break it down. And this is how we talk about robotics and how we talk about what a robot is here at Bird Brain Technologies. So a, a robot is something that senses, thinks, and acts. So in terms of your kit, um, you guys probably have two sensors in there. You have a light sensor and you have a dial sensor. And what these sensors do is they gather information. Um, they gather data in the form of a number. If you've got a premium kit, you may have a couple additional sensors. You might also have a distance sensor, which I like this one. It looks like Wally. I think it's the cutest sensor. Um, and then there's also a sound sensor if you've got a, a premium kit or a classroom set. So these sensors gather information. The thinking happens on the hummingbird board with your micro bit. And I'm going to talk about what a micro bit is in just a little bit. But that's where the thinking happens. It plans what it's gonna do, and then it does something. And the doing something, the actions, come in the form of LEDs or motors. And you 
You may have a motor that's small and blue and looks like that. That's a, another type of motor. So sense, think, act. And a lot of robots have the, the capability, a lot of educational robots have the capability to sense things, to plan what they're gonna do. You can program them and then they can do stuff. But the point of a hummingbird is that you take these components and you combine them with craft supplies and you make whatever you want to make. Um, you can hot glue right onto the motors, you can poke holes in cardboard and make a great constellation project. You can do all sorts of really cool and fun things with robotics if you can incorporate it with craft supplies. Um, so when we're talking about, by the way, we're talking about the Finch robot, that's this little guy right here. Um, the Finch robot has all of those same things too. Nobody probably has a Finch in front of them because this Finch 2 robot right here is brand new. It's only available for um, pre-sale right now actually. Um, so nobody has one of these in front of them just like this, although you may have a Finch 1 in front of you. Um, so, uh, but this Finch also has sensors, it has a motherboard or a microcontroller and it has actions. So I'll come back to this one in just a little bit. I'm gonna start with a hummingbird though, cause that's what most of you probably have in front of you. So we'll come back to Finchy a little bit later, all right? So um, when we talk about hummingbird, we're gonna come back to some of the research that led to hummingbird in just a little bit, but I think it's a great time for us to go ahead and just start playing and programming with one. So go ahead and grab out your hummingbird. And here are the pieces that you're going to want to grab out of your kit. Okay, so you're going to want to get your micro bit. It's probably in a little metallic case that looks like this. I'm going to focus in a little bit better here. There we go. All right. All right, so you want to grab your micro bit. You want to grab your hummingbird. Looks like so. Um, you'll want to get your battery pack, which looks like this, and it takes four AA batteries. There may already be batteries in it. There may not be. You may have to go swipe some batteries from your TV remote. It's totally valid. Totally swiped uh, batteries from a hotel TV remote before. <laughs> um, and then you'll also want to grab your USB cord like so. We'll need that just briefly, but as I mentioned before, we're going to be um, programming with your smartphone. So while you're grabbing those things out, I also want you to download an app. So this app is called the Bird Blocks app, and I'll show you what it looks like. The icon for it looks like our icon, so the bird that's right above my head there, boop, boop, that's what the icon looks like. So you'll want to download the Bird Blocks app onto your phone or onto your iPad. It's a free app. Once you download it, it doesn't require Wi-Fi or anything like that but it is going to allow all of us to program our, um, our uh, uh, bird brain or our hummingbirds in the same way, because just about everybody has a smartphone. Um, so um, while you guys are downloading the Bird Blocks app, I want to talk about these two pieces here. So um, this right here is called a microbit. So some of you may be familiar with the microbit, some of you may not. This is a super powerful little physical computing tool. Um, it's 15 bucks, so it's really cheap. And it's got all kinds of inputs and outputs. So it's got these A and B buttons that you can push here. Those are type of input or type of sensing. These little dots on the front, this is a five by five LED display. So you can scroll words or symbols or whatever across it. Along the bottom here, these, are, um, these little gold things are ports where you could use um, alligator clips. You could clip on LEDs or motors on there. And if you flip it over on the back, you'll see a couple things. Number one, you'll see that it says BBC. We don't make this, we just really like it. <laughs> um, the BBC Foundation actually makes this microcontroller, but it also has things like an accelerometer, so it knows when it's being tilted on an X or a Y axis. It's got a compass, so it knows what direction it's pointing, and um, it also has radio function, which means that microbits can talk to each other through radio frequencies, which gets really cool really quickly. Um, but the main difference between a microcontroller like the microbit versus something like an Arduino, if you've heard of those, is Arduinos were invented for people with like basements and like time and like a, a, a really good big interest in computing and robotics. Um, Arduinos were never really invented for like a classroom full of third graders to all be using at the same time. Um, you can plug things in wrong and, flat and fry the board. And when you wanna try and plug things into an Arduino, it gets really finicky and really hard. But this was developed for 
classrooms, for teachers, and for kids. Um, so this is a super powerful little tool. But if you want to get into the real physical robotics, physical computing side of it, it's only got four ports down here, and you have to use alligator clips, which can kind of come undone. So what we did with the hummingbird is we made the hummingbird into a breakout board. So you can just snap your micro bit right in there. You can go ahead and do that right now as well. Let me zoom in on this just briefly. I'm going to make sure that this stays in frame because you should be downloading the Bird Blocks app onto your device. But if we take a look at our Hummingbird board, you'll see that instead of just those four ports, now you have two tricolor LED ports. These yellow ones are single color LED ports. You've got three of those. You've got four motor ports. Those are the black towers off to the side. You've got three sensors, plus you've got a buzzer here as well. So that's 13 things you can run off of the same brain or the same micro bit. Um, plus, if you use that radio function, um, you can sync up multiple hummingbirds to talk to each other. You could initiate a sensor on this hummingbird across the room, and that hummingbird over there will do something. Very cool. Um, so, uh, hopefully you have downloaded the Bird Blocks app now, and then I'd love to know, uh, uh, on your, uh, we're going to plug your hummingbird in right now, so make sure you've got your, um, your micro bit plugged in, make sure the colorful side is facing up, so there's like a black and white side, you want that side to be down, and plug your micro bit in, like so, so that the colorful side is facing up, and then go ahead and grab your battery pack, and plug your battery pack in the other side, and turn it on. There's a little switch there. Um, so you'll want to make sure that your battery pack is turned, turned on. And this is my hope. And I'd love to know, you guys can actually, if you want to uh, start your videos, everybody can just give me a thumbs up. Is your micro bit flashing three letters? If it's not flashing three letters, I want you to let me know. Because if everybody's micro bits are already flashing three letters, I can skip the next step. Hey, thank you, JD. JD, star student, A plus, gold star. Anybody else? Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you are, if you have three letters flashing on your micro bit in front of you. And if you don't, maybe give me a thumbs down or, or like a really sad face. <laughs> um, how about you, Steven and, and James? Yeah, thumbs up, Steven. How about you, James? Great, great. Um, cool. <laughs> um, Let's see, I don't have a, oh, Heather Hooper. Did you, um, Heather, did you have a little uh, metallic um, thing like that? Your micro bit should be inside of there. Or you may have an older version of the hummingbird that doesn't work with a micro bit. You may have something called the hummingbird. I, can you hear me? I can, yeah. Okay, I have um, like the classroom hummingbird duo kit. Uh. So the big orange box. Yeah. So I don't have like, I don't have the battery right. pack and I don't have all that. Yeah. I will, before we go today, I will show you a way if you like what we're doing today. So we're going to focus on this hummingbird bit today. We're right. Gonna program it with um, a smartphone or an iPad, but there's a way that you can do that as well. Or if you like this micro bit part, there, there's basically two things, two ways to upgrade your Duo. One will make it work with an iPad or uh, will make it work with Bluetooth, and one will make it work with a micro bit. So there's two different ways if you want to upgrade, or um, we can also just stay after briefly and chat about your Duos to make sure you've got what you need for those. Okay, yeah, because I haven't been able to use them very well. I'm like, hopefully I can get something from this yeah. to at least get this started. Absolutely, and you'll absolutely get, um, you'll, you'll learn how to navigate around our website where you'll be able to find all the resources you need to right. be able to use your Duos today, so. Perfect. Great. Let's see. Um, I chew, you're also using the older version of the Hummingbird. But you do have a micro bit. Okay, so um, uh, at the end today, I too will make sure to go over how to set up your Hummingbird Duo to work with your micro bit. I'll show you the, the piece that you need to do that um, so that you've got that information. Cool. Okay, so we've got, and Kathy doesn't have a kit with her. She's just watching for a refresher. Cool. All right, so sounds like everybody who's got a Hummingbird bit in front of them does have three letters, so that's perfect. If you wanted to know how to set up your Hummingbird to work with Bluetooth though, um, you'll see I put a link in our document. It says, put your micro bit into Bluetooth mode here. It's a really easy thing to do. You just download a file onto your, your um, micro bit, super easy. But since we're all there already, now I want you to grab out a single color LED. It'll look like this. There will be a red one, a yellow one, and a green one. Snag one of those from your kit because we're going to blink an LED together. It'll be super easy. 
So grab out your single LED and also grab out this little orange doohickey. This is called a terminal tool or uh, I call it a poking stick because it's for poking. Um, so if you've got your LED and you've got your terminal tool, we'll look at our board here and see where it says LED one, two, and three right there. And then it's got positive and negative. Well, we're gonna plug our LED wires into LED port one. The colorful wire, whether it's red or yellow or green, is gonna go in the positive side of the port and the black wire is gonna go in the negative side of the port. So the way that you use this terminal tool is you'll push down on the button, insert the wire at about a 45 degree angle, and then let up on the button, and it'll pinch it in place. Push down on the button, insert the wire, let up, and it'll pinch it in place like so. So now we've got a single LED plugged in. Great. So hopefully you downloaded the Bird Blocks app because that is where we're headed next on our programming journey together. All right, so I'm gonna open up Bird Blocks. Oh, and I was doing some things earlier. I will, uh, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna do a couple things. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do in Bird Blocks is give your program a title. We're gonna be building a program. So I'm gonna call it um, FETC because I met a lot of you at FETC. So this will be our FETC program. Cool. And then mine automatically connected because I was connected to this before. But just as a quick um, overview, if you've never done much with block-based programming before, um, what we're looking at here is a programming language. It's like Scratch or Snap um, or Make Code, but this one is a programming language that we designed to be able to um, work with uh, tablets and smartphones. So if you click around in these different like folders here, they're different folders full of blocks, and each of these blocks does different things. Um, so we're gonna mostly be in the blue robot blocks and in the gold control blocks today. Um, but before we do that, we gotta connect your um, iPad or your smartphone to your uh, hummingbird. And we do that wirelessly through this little button up here. It looks like a bird with like a paper clip next to it. Hit that and say connect device. And then it will scan the room and it will figure out, it will find all of the hummingbirds that are in your room that are in Bluetooth mode. There's probably only one and it's probably in front of you. So you'll select the one that matches the three letters flashing on your screen. So my three letters are S-A-R, which stands for Striped Apricot Rooster. They all come with a random three-word name like that. So if you heard, -da -da -doo, that is the sound of connection. We did it. Awesome. And now you'll see that a bunch of uh, blocks appeared in our um, hummingbird block section, in our robots blocks. So to get our LED to turn on, I'm going to focus in on my LED here. To get our LED to turn on, we'll need to drag out this block that says bit LED one, zero percent. You can zoom in on it like this. So this is saying hummingbird bit, LED, um, so single color LED. This is the port that you're plugged into. So I'm plugged into port one, so I'm gonna select port one. And this is the brightness of your LED. So right now it's at zero percent brightness. What do you think we'd set it at to make it go all the way on? We could type in there. 100% brightness. And then to make the block work, you just click the part that says bit. Ta -da! We just turned a light on. We just turned a light on. Yeah. So really easy to program, really instant to program as well. But getting a light to turn on is pretty cool, but getting a light to blink is way cooler. So to get it to blink, let's drag out another one of those same blocks. Don't connect it to anything just yet, but click that. And now we just turned it off because we left it at 0%. So I could click back and forth, back and forth like so, and get my light to turn on and off. Oh, very cool. But that's pretty labor intensive and robotics is all about automation. So um, looks like uh, James is maybe having trouble connecting. Can you help him troubleshoot that, Matt? Okay, so Matt is gonna help you troubleshoot that, James. Um, so, uh, and Matt, by the way, if you wanna wave Matt, Matt is actually in the same room as me, but he's connected through a different computer. And uh, Matt is our, our video um, learning specialist. Um, so he's helping me out with our webinar today. But so we, we got our LED to blink on and off like so. But if we want to get it to do that automatically, we could snap these two blocks together. We could go into the gold control blocks, scroll down until you find one that says repeat forever. Put it kind of in the middle of nowhere there. 
and then grab your two blue blocks and snap them inside of that repeat forever loop. Then to initiate it, you click it. And then it blinks really fast because it's running this program really, really fast. It's going on, off, on, off, on, off, and it's like looping, right? To slow it down, let's say you're about to have a conniption fit, it's too much, and grab a wait one second block and snag it in there, and then grab another one and snap it on the bottom there. So now, the way that it's reading this program is it's turning the LED on, it's waiting for a second before it proceeds to the next block, turning it off to 0%, and then waiting one second before it, um, and, uh, before it loops back up to the top. Now, let me ask you guys, and if you've got the answer, go ahead and unmute yourself and give us the answer, but how could I make my LED blink faster? What would I wanna change in my program? If you know, unmute yourself and tell us. How could I make my LED blink faster? I won't change the brightness of the LED. I'll change how long I'm waiting for. So I could change this to 0.5 seconds instead of one second. And now it's automatically changed because of that instant Bluetooth connection. And now it's blinking on and off every half a second. Here we go. Yeah, nice. I see you. I cheer you said change the time. Nice work. Yes. So we could do that. Um, and this is like half the joy of working with a hummingbird, I think, getting something that you did on a screen to um, be physical. And that's actually something, I said we'd talk a little bit about this, the um, hummingbird came about from research at Carnegie Mellon University, and the research question that they were asking was, how do you engage more girls in coding? And the first thing that they found was, make it physical. Take your coding off of just the screen and make it something that is going on in the real world. And so this is the first step of that. But the second thing that they found in this research was uh, in order to engage girls in coding, you had to give them meaningful creative choices. And like, do you want your robot to be pink is not exactly a meaningful creative choice. But the question, what do you want to make? Now that is a meaningful creative choice. So I'm going to put my blinking light just off to the side here. And I'm going to show you a really cool thing that you can do to build with an LED. So. I'm gonna grab my cutting board here. Ta-da! I'm gonna grab a blade. There we go. And I'm also gonna grab a piece of cardboard. So this piece of cardboard is kind of big for what I want it to do. So I'm gonna cut it down a little bit. I'm also gonna grab a marker in a second. But in order to build with an LED, there's a lot of different ways that you could build with an LED, but I'm gonna show you one of my favorites here, which is uh, just take a, a piece of cardboard Grab your cutting tool, like so, and uh, cut a little X in your cardboard, like this. Then I'll put my blade away, safety first. And then I'm gonna use my terminal tool to just kind of poke through that a little bit, make that hole a little bit bigger. And now I'm gonna get my LED, and I'm actually gonna unplug it from my hummingbird by just pressing the two buttons and unplugging the, the wires. I'm gonna feed the wires through that X that we just made. And when I pull it taut, look there, I've just made a really snug mount for that LED. And we find that this works better than like trying to poke a hole and pushing the LED through. So this little hack here, this is starting to look like a project. So I'm just gonna plug that back in. And because that program is still running, once I reestablish a connection with the wires, um, it'll continue running whatever that code is that's on it. There you go. So it's still blinking every half a second. This is starting to look like something, but it's still not quite a thing, right? Almost a thing, not quite a thing. So I'm gonna make this into a little character. And in the chat section, if you have a guess as to what or who I'm drawing, you should guess in the chat section. Keep in mind, I am more of a singing artist than a visual artist. <laughs> so please be kind. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna give our character a little shirt because this is for school and nakedness is not allowed. Also, pants feel important to me. Anybody got a guess yet? What am I drawing? All right, oh, Charlie Brown, good guess, good guess. Could be. <laughs> 
שלי, אוקיי. שאלה. There we go. What do you think, guys? It's charming, right? And so accurate. It's a little alien. Woo, and he's gone. Shrek. It could be Shrek. Could be Shrek. Uh, <laughs> could be Shrek. Yes, yes. Kathy Babo, uh, you are correct. It's probably Shrek. <laughs> But now this, this is something more like a project. I've actually seen a teacher do a really funky lesson with this where she had her kids inventing superheroes and then they were uh, poking holes in cardboard and, and so you could do a traditional superhero like Iron Man and have his chest glow. I also saw a little girl make um, a superhero who could talk to animals and it had pink lights coming out of her hands. So like, yes, great, let's all get creative with our superheroes. Um, but if you're looking for something a little bit more concrete using a couple more lights, let me show you another thing. Clean up my workspace here for just a second. So I've made this guy right here and maybe Matt will help me focus him. There we go. Um, so I made a little stoplight here, here we go. Uh, and I'll plug it into a battery pack. And so this stoplight project, here's my coffee cup in the background. Um, this stoplight project uses the red and the yellow and the green LEDs that you have in your kit. And now this would be a really great station if you want to get your kids to program the stoplight to go from red to yellow to green. So this is a, a cool little project. But for me, I think the really big opportunity with, bird, uh, with a hummingbird specifically is not just in making cool, funky little projects, although that's great, especially if you're in an after-school space, if you're in a creative coding um, class, if you're in a STEM class, um, if you want to get an engineering class, hummingbird has so many great opportunities for kids to be endlessly creative with it. But I think that a real opportunity with it is to do some content connected things in your classroom. So let me show you an example. All right, I'm gonna come look at this one from the, from the top down camera here. There we go, Let's zoom out a little bit. So this is a really cool example of a social studies or a science project. Um, so this is a map that shows the migration patterns of monarch butterflies. And maybe you guys know this, but monarch butterflies, almost all the monarch butterflies in the Western Hemisphere, they all hibernate in right about the same spot in Mexico, and then they migrate outward and upward from there. And so this map communicates a couple of different things. First, it communicates where they go. It also communicates what generation of monarch butterfly is making it there. I didn't realize this, but it's not one butterfly that goes all the way up to Canada. It's actually three generations. So the first generation is symbolized by these red LEDs. The second generation is symbolized by the yellow LEDs. And the third generation is the green LEDs up in Canada. So you can see how the generations of monarchs spread out. But there's one other level to this project that I've been hiding. I'll bring it around this way. If I switch the mode that my uh, project is in, I added a sensor to this project. So I'll kind of put it off to the side here. This sensor has a dial. The dial sensor is something that you have in your kit too. And so what I've done is I've also said the time of year that these butterflies are in these different parts. So I say first generation in April and in May, you can see where they get to in about May. And then when we get to June, that's about when the first generation lays its eggs and dies. And by June, that's when the Southeastern United States sees these butterflies June and July. And then in about August, that's when the people up in Canada see the third generation of monarch butterflies. And then after that, the fourth generation, in one generation, they go all the way back down to the south. So this dial sensor is controlling which lights light up. And I've made my, um, my uh, uh, um, sensor readout. I've made a little panel for that here so you can see the, the, the times of the year. So this map There are a lot of cool ways that this map could fit into social studies with migration patterns, tracking battles across a war, all kinds of things like that that you could do with just LEDs and maybe adding a sensor. Um, let me show you some other cool resources and other great projects. So let me grab my, my wires here, put this back up here.
Okay. Um, so if I go back over to our, um, our document here, uh, I was talking about programming Hummingbird with bird blocks. I was showing you that hack with a, a um, LED, but I want to show you where you can find all of these things on our website. So in, in here, uh, I just went to the Bird Brain website and I'm going to show you how to navigate around. And especially for iChu and, and Heather, this is where I'm going to show you where to find all these same resources that are specific to your product, the Hummingbird Duo. So that we have, uh, if you hit the get started button, that takes you to our learning portal. And this learning portal is where you choose your product. So I was working with the Hummingbird bit. You choose the device that you were working with. I was working with an iPad and it tells you what programming language you'll need to use to do that. But I could go back up and reselect things. I could say, I've got a Hummingbird Duo, and in my classroom, I've got Chromebooks. So you can see that with a uh, Hummingbird Duo and a Chromebook, you could use Make Code, Snap, or Scratch with your Hummingbird Duo. So I'm gonna go back up and reselect um, what I was using for bird blocks so that you guys can see that. And then you hit get started and it brings you to this page where there are four different tabs, program, build, teach, and resources. I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of what's on each of these pages. So on the programming page, these are quick little modules starting with how to set up your device. So I mentioned if you, um, you need to put your hummingbird into Bluetooth mode um, or you need to download bird blocks, this will tell you exactly where to download it how to do the, uh, how to attach all the pieces together. We've got these great little looping videos that teach you from start to finish exactly how to set up your hummingbird. And those hands, I don't know if you recognize those hands, but those are Matt's hands. Those hands right there, yeah. So <laughs> basically you guys are pretty special because no one ever gets to see Matt's face <laughs> and you guys know what it looks like. <laughs> but beyond <laughs> setting it up, um, we've also got all of these modules that teach you how to use each of the components in your kit. So how to use a single color LED, which just like we did, there's um, these side-by-side -side videos of how to get your LED to blink. And the last one is always um, a little challenge, right? A program that makes your LED blink faster. You'll have to use decimals. Ooh, we figured that out though, because we are very smarty pants kids. Um, but there's a module for how to use the tricolor LED, the LED screen on your micro bit, the position servo, the rotation servo, the buzzer, each of those outputs and each of the inputs. And also, as of Friday, we have these really cool going further modules. Hello. And I'll mute Matt because only one of him needs to be in the room at a time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so in this uh, going further module, Matt shows you some really cool things to do with the concept of variables if you're looking for something else to do with your hummingbird. But I will tell you that just the outputs are, are absolutely enough to make your first project. Um, make something like the traffic light or maybe make something like um, this little guy back here. We call him the little bot. I made my little bot look like Harry Potter because I cannot help myself. And so that's just two motors moving around. This science project back here is literally just one motor and it's a working model of an elbow. It's showing how the muscles and joints connect to an elbow and make that work. You could make um, a robot petting zoo character or a number of different things that align to what you're doing in your classroom. Um, but that is all just on the programming page. On the building page, some teachers uh, need a little bit of guidance on how to program. They've never done that before. Some teachers need a little bit of guidance on how and what to build. So down at the bottom here, that hack that I showed you about how to use an LED and how to build with an LED, we have a little video that shows you that exact same thing. Cut an X in some cardboard and feed your LED through wires first to get it to mount really snugly and securely without, um, any, uh, without any glue or tape or anything to build a cool project with. We also have how to mount a servo in a couple of different ways. Um, so that's on the build page. There are also some really great example of some examples of some simple robots to make. There's the little bot. We'll teach you how to make a little bot. And we break it down into these easy little steps down here so you can see step by step exactly how to do it. Plus, on the bottom here, there are some really great build variations as well. Um, so Matt is going to show you how to take this simple little bot here and build a couple different things with it. I think this one is my favorite part. I can go up here. He shows you how to make a little bot with a mac and cheese box and a cup. So like whatever you've got around, you can make a funky little bot 
um, just with whatever craft supplies you've got hanging out. Um, my other favorite one is the Tiny Drummer. I go back to build here. Um, I love the Tiny Drummer project. I just think it's so funny. It's a little guy with a stick and a cup and he's drumming. And this little minute and a half long video will teach you how to build a basic tiny drummer. But then what I do in workshop is, in workshops is I say, all right, now make it weird. Pick your favorite song. What would it look like if someone was drumming to your favorite song, etc." cetera. Um, so that's all on the build page. Plus there are these great mechanism tutorials where we teach you how to make really cool mechanisms with just craft supplies. So that's all on the build page as well. Um, and then on the teach page, I mentioned that I think one of the, uh, the biggest opportunities with Hummingbird is to make content connected robotics, to put robots in your English class or your science class. So you can see all kinds of different projects on here. There are over 60 different classroom connected content related projects that are on here. And just to show you one other example, I wanna show you our Hamlet robot here. Bring him into focus. So here's Hamlet. Yes, and then I'll plug him in. And so here's Hamlet. He's got his skull. He's, he's thinking about whether he ought to be or not to be. That is the question. And uh, if you can bring it up, just there you go. Yeah. Um, so he's also got a light sensor here. So if I put him in a different mode, yeah. So if I cover up the light sensor, if I put him in the dark, he's more likely not to be. <laughs> he's a he's a summer he's a summer Hamlet. So if I cover him up, not to be, to be or not to be, to be or not to be. And see, Matt even made some slings and arrows to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. You guys, we have too much fun. It's <laughs> it's a good time. But I think this is really important because Hamlet is not. He, 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 he continues to choose to be, right? He's, he's going back and forth between this question. And so we've made a, a funky little robot with a light, a motor, and a sensor um, showing something that you might do in, in an English classroom. But all of the, all of the projects like that are on, our, um, on the Teach page. And you can even filter it. And these are true for both Hummingbird Bit or Duo, depending on what you have. All of the projects that are on here can be made with either of those. Um, so then the last page is the resources page. And this is, this one's my baby. This page right here is um, all of the different printable resources that we have to help you translate this into the classroom. So we've got, this is, I think the best resource we have on here, this lesson plan. It's a full, um, a full step-by-step -step lesson plan um, for how to teach your first hour of robotics, kind of like hour of code. Um, lessons from code.org. These are like hour of robots lessons from BirdBrain. Um, what can you reasonably do in an hour? You can do lights, you can do motors, you can make a little project. Um, and it's got some content that you can connect to all within 60 minutes with like 30 emotional, sweaty eight year olds. What can you reasonably do with that? Um, so um, that lesson plans there, there's all kinds of printable prototyping activities, um, printable troubleshooting cards, and coding cards to give your kids another way to interact with and learn how to code. Um, those are all on our resources page, as well as this great grants page, which uh, let's say you're super interested in this thing, but you're like, ah, money, how can I pay for this thing? Um, there's this great page full of different people who like to give money for stuff like this, as well as this grant guide that will help you write your first grant or write a grant with um, Hummingbird and or Finch products in it um, to help answer those questions that they're probably going to answer to ask you. You can just copy paste directly from this Google Doc. Um, so that's how uh, that's uh, hopefully answers some questions for both Bit and Duo users about how to find the resources that you're interested in, how to find the resources that are relevant to you for Hummingbird. But I also want to talk about our brand new Finch 2.0. So um, we talked about this model of robotics as something that senses, thinks, and acts. And so with our, um, with our Finch, the actions, the things that it does, it's got lights in the nose and in the tail. It's got wheels. Uh, it's got a buzzer. Um, this is also really cool. This is a hole for 
a marker. So you could put a Crayola marker right in the bottom there and it's gonna poke out the bottom and you could use that to roll your finch around and draw. So that's another type of output that it's got. It's got um, Lego uh, adapters, or excuse me, plastic brick adapters for whatever plastic bricks you have to build with, what brand they are. Um, and uh, it's also got this micro bit screen back here that you can um, scroll words across and make faces on and stuff like that. So those are the outputs. And for inputs, what does it have for inputs? Well, it's got a distance sensor. It's actually the same distance sensor that the hummingbird has, but it's already made into a thing. It's got um, infrared line following sensors um, or line sensing sensors. It's got um, uh, light sensors uh, in the top of it here. And then it's also got all of those sensors um, and inputs that I mentioned the micro bit has, you can use with your finch. So the accelerometer, the compass, um, the radio function, all of those things that the micro bit has, the finch can use as well. So let me show you how to program this because there's some really exciting opportunities with Finch. Um, I think the main advantage of Finch, if you're looking for a tool in the classroom, is that it kind of is already a thing. If you don't have time to build and program in, uh, to build and program in your classroom, if you want to have a more narrow focus on physical, on, on computer science, this is a really powerful tool to do that. Because again, if you want to engage more kids in computer science, make it physical. Um, take it off the screen and make it a real thing that does something. So um, with both Hummingbird and Finch, you can program with text-based languages like Python and Java. You can program with block-based languages like Bird Blocks or Make Code or Scratch or Snap. But with Finch, you can also program with icon-based programming languages. So there's an app we developed called Finch Blocks. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to connect to my Finch here. This one is MCU, which is not the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's Mythical Citrine Unicorn. So I'll connect to that. <clears throat> there we go. So it's connected. And so Finch Blocks is an icon-based programming language that would be appropriate for pre-readers. Students who don't understand percentages or maybe aren't even reading numbers yet can drag these icons up. And these icons will make the finch do different things. So as I drag these icons up, I'm gonna control the color of the nose and the tail. I'm gonna get it to play a couple of notes here. And then I think, yeah, look at there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we go, cool. So now we can see what the code and what the finch are doing together. So I'm gonna hit the green flag. It's gonna go forward, turn, and you can see as the finch is doing each of these steps, it's lighting up the code. So I think this is a really important, it seems like a small difference between something like the finch and something like, like a bebot, um, but I think it's a really important distinction because the learning that students are doing is no longer separated by time. You can see your finch uh, doing these things um, in real time and you can start to understand the difference between um, and the connection between what you just did on a screen and what your finch is doing in real life. Um, so to highlight that further, let me back this up here, that's just level one of finch blocks. Level two of finch blocks gives you a little bit more control. So now you can choose how far do you want the finch to go? I want it to go 20 centimeters forward, 19 I guess. And then let's turn and watch this. We've got this slider bar here and I don't want it to turn 90 degrees. I want it to go 120 degrees. There we go. See the, how that icon changes as I slide my slider bar around? So it's starting to build that angle knowledge as well. You get more control with what you want to do with the nose and the tail, right? You can pick notes on a piano like so. So let me go back to this view right here. Here we go. Let's go. Forward, turn 120 degrees, and then you'll see the nose and the tail, and there's the note that it played. There you go. So um, this, uh, this programming language, uh, these, this uh, icon-based programming language can grow with your students because then in level three, you even get some basic control blocks like a repeat forever loop or a numbered repeat loop. Um, 
those things that we saw in bird blocks that were at more of like a third, fourth, fifth, up to seventh or eighth, or really I think block-based programming is appropriate for anyone who's never programmed anything before, but this is appropriate for a kindergarten through fourth or fifth grader, especially if what you want to focus on with your computer science is something like building, um, drawing shapes or something like that. Maybe you don't want to get into all of the computer science of what it means to draw a shape, but we could build an algorithm to go forward 10 centimeters, to turn 90 degrees, and we would repeat that. If we were going to draw a square, we would repeat that four times. So let's see our finch draw a square. Forward, turn, forward, turn. Now picture we had a marker in there and I would be drawing a square on my brown butcher paper right now. And we just did that by building an algorithm. So you can use computer science to teach math concepts, to talk about sequencing and stories. There's some really great um, lesson plans uh, that we've developed with teachers about um, writing a story with a first, next, last sort of thing and having your finch move through the story to, um, uh, to, to do something like that. Or there's this great project that I wanna show you. I call it finch jousting. So you get a cup. We'll do like so. You get a cup, you get a ping pong ball, and you get your finch. I'll move my owl out of the way here. There you go, and you get your finch. Okay, and then what your students have to do, what their assignment is, is to get the finch to knock the ball off the cup. But they have to use a, um, they have to use a digital solution for that, so they have to program it to get it to do that. And they have to have a physical solution for it as well. So something like maybe a straw. I'm gonna bend up my bendy straw. I'm gonna stick it in the hole. And let's see if I can program my finch. Oh, I'm gonna do this one. Let's see if I can program my finch to joust the ball off the cup. Okay, so I'm gonna have it go forward. This looks like, I don't know maybe 30 centimeters and I'm gonna have it turn to the left left and I want to have it go I want to have it turn probably 120 degrees and I want it to go fast so I want it to really whack that ball all right let's see so let's see how I did full note I'm probably gonna fail okay <laughs> ready set go 30 centimeters Huh? Oh, I missed it. But you could imagine how I would have like hit it and that would have been great, right? But it wasn't, but it could have been. So <laughs> uh, I, I like doing that one during, um, during workshops, having um, students or and teachers do finch jousting because it's just such a fun activity and you see them really interacting between that code and the physical and they're solving their problems with physical solutions and with coding solutions and with the finch that's just so easy to do because it's it's already a thing it's already a funky little rover that you can program to do what you want it to do um, so with that let me just check back in on our um, our thing here okay so we've just got about 10 minutes left in our um, uh, we've got about 10 minutes left in our webinar here I want to share a couple of things with everybody let me clean up my workspace here so that you guys know what you can do next. Um, so, first of all, uh, if you are not one of the people who has a demo in front of you, you should know that there's a way that you can get a free demo of the Hummingbird Bit. So it's a 60 day demo, we ship it to you wherever you are for free. You get to keep it for 60 days, and um, then if you don't want it anymore, if you got what you needed out of it, you can send it back, or if you're one of the people that does have a demo, you can actually purchase your demo kit for 20% off because it's used, used by you, um, but you can purchase your demo kit if you wanna keep it, um, and you could use that as a station in your classroom or use that as the start of a classroom set. Um, but then the other thing that I wanna share is that we do, um, we do the hardware, so we do the Hummingbird, we do the Finch, but we also do the PD that goes with it. Um, so if you have any questions about how you could bring me or Matt or one of our team out to do some professional development with your school, especially if you're thinking, oh, I want to order some of this hardware, 
but I want to make sure that my teachers know how to use it. We can make sure that they have the professional development to do that. So that could be on-site course, uh, on-site um, professional development. We fly out to you. I actually just got back from California just two days ago because I was doing some workshops out there. Or we could use this video, um, call it live stream learning. Uh, we could use live stream learning to teach your teachers as well. We're finding that that can be really effective because rather than you know me just coming out and hoping that I can transmit everything I need in one day with your teachers, and that means you having to find a sub for the whole day, we could do two or three live stream learning sessions of like two or three hours each. So you could just do a half day or we could do it after school or something like that. Um, so this live stream learning platform is a really powerful way to deliver professional development. Um, or there's also um, online learning. I wanna show you at the bottom here, if I go find professional development, this is our brand new PD page, and we have these free video courses here. Right now there is only one available for Make Code, but Matt and I are just about to finish filming for the Bird Blocks course. You'll recognize this shirt when you download that course actually um, but um, so we'll have these free video courses it's basically what I would do in a full day workshop but it's condensed down into about an hour's worth of video content which we have like a, a, I believe about 14 videos that across those videos will teach you how to blink a light and build with a light how to program a tri LED and how to build with a tri LED We'll teach you about mechanisms. We'll teach you about um, motors and sensors and project integration ideas. So all these different robots on our shelf back here, we take them down and we really get inside and take a, a deep look at them. Um, and they're absolutely free. So you don't have to pay for them. Your district doesn't have to pay for them. You register, you get a little code and you get to access these courses for an unlimited amount of time for free. Um, so those courses are, are, I think, really powerful and a really powerful way for a district to train a lot of people for not a lot of money. Um, so be sure that you um, contact me uh, if you want to purchase your demo kit, if you want to get a free demo, or um, if you want to talk about how, if you're looking into getting this hardware, how we could um, package together some PD for you as well. Um, and we're also always available via social meds, social medias. So you can always tweet or Instagram or Facebook at Birdbrain Tech. Um, there's the Hummingbird Kit. There's also, I should add Finch 2 to that. And then this is my personal Twitter as well. So I'm always tweeting out really cool videos of what we do in workshops. So if you want to get some cool inspiration from that, you certainly can. But if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions. I'll be here uh, for the next few minutes. And I want to make sure to show Heather and um, I Chew how to upgrade their duo kits as well. But before that, does anybody have any other questions or anything? Hey, awesome. I too, it was, uh, I'm really glad that you're here. Let me, um, while people are, are getting themselves together, just in case you can type your questions out or you can speak them as well. Um, I'm gonna go grab my duo kit to show you how you can upgrade your duo I'm either to use the micro bit. Uh, yeah, there's one more bit. Uh, sorry, uh, under, under the table. Hmm. Is, there should be a duo is there a Bluetooth upgrade? Ah, in the... I got that in my backpack. You don't? I don't. Okay, let me grab one from your okay. face. Actually, there might be one. There. Oh, look, there we I go. A, yeah, yeah perfect. About these. Cool. So for Heather and I Chew, um, there's, two, there's two ways to upgrade your um, duo. So if you've got a duo kit, looks like this, right? It's a big black square thing. It probably came in a, a big orange um, thing, or you might have a smaller cardboard box. So your duo is like this. It's got lights. It's got places for lights. It's got places to plug in motors. It's got places for sensors. Yours also has vibration motors. We found that not very many people were using those, so we didn't put them on the bit, but that's another thing you guys have that the bit doesn't have. Um, but right now, the way the, the best way you could probably use your um, Hummingbird Duo would be with a program like Scratch or Snap um, uh, or Python or Java if you're working with older students. Um, but you can use those. You don't have to do anything to your Hummingbird in order to use that. You would just uh, plug it in from here and you'd plug it into your computer. And all of that, like how to do all of that, is if I go back here and if I were to select um doo -doo -doo. i'll deselect these i'll go over here and select hummingbird duo and like a mac computer you might select say scratch you'd go to get started and it shows you exactly what you need to install um, to to do that 
um, the software you would need to install, the hardware, not hardware actually, you have that already, but the, the software you'd need to install to use that with Scratch. Um, but uh, if you want to get your duo boards to work with an iPad or a tablet, there's a super simple way to do that. There are two different, uh, there's the old version and the new version. I'll show you the new version, because that's probably what you get. This is a Bluetooth adapter. So this Bluetooth adapter, you plug in, nope, not that way, yep, this way. You just plug into the bottom of your board, line up all the little holes, here we go. So you just plug that in like so, and it snaps into place like that. And now, once I turn this on, and if I, uh, again, went through our, um, if I, <coughs> excuse me, went through the um, learning portal and selected, you know, duo iPad bird blocks, now I'd be able to use my um, duo with an iPad, and I'd be able to do that wireless programming like we were just doing through Bluetooth. Or if you like the micro bit, and you like all those features of the micro bit, and I would say especially if you have Chromebooks um, or laptops, and right now the, I think the biggest disadvantage to the Duo is that it has to be connected through a wire to your laptop or Chromebook, and so if you ever wanna put your projects out on display, which is what most people wanna do with Hummingbird projects, um, you have to have the Chromebook or laptop there and it has to be running Scratch or Snap actively can't really download code onto the hummingbird very easily, but you can download code onto the micro bit really easily through make code, which looks just like scratch, just like snap, just like bird blocks. It's a super simple programming language to use. So if you wanted to be able to attach a micro bit and use and download code like that, you'd need this piece. This is called the micro bit adapter. And so similarly, this just snaps onto the bottom of your hummingbird, like so. And then your micro bit snaps in there. And now you can use all those micro bit features. You can use the compass and the accelerometer if you're interested in that, or the radio function if you're interested in that. Or this is the thing that I hear teachers who've used the duos and are now using either the upgrade bundle or the, um, the new bit, the biggest change is being able to download code. And once you've made your code and you have it how you like it, you download it on here, you disconnect it from your computer, and now you can put your um, robots up on display and you don't have to have the computer anywhere nearby to be able to do that. So I really like this make code upgrade bundle. And I think for the, for the there's a, it comes in a bundle with the adapter, the micro bit, the USB cord, and a battery pack. I think it's like $37 for, for an upgrade bundle like this. And the Bluetooth adapter also comes in an upgrade bundle. It comes with the adapter and a battery pack so that you can be totally mobile and you don't have to be plugged into the walls. I think that's like 30 bucks. Um, you can also, if you like the battery pack thing, I know sometimes it's just a challenge to find like wall outlets, unless you're in a computer lab where you are attached to the wall anyway, if you're using like uh, Chromebooks or something where it's meant to be mobile. You can also just order battery packs. I think they're like five bucks. They're really cheap on our website. So you can also just order, you know, if you have a classroom set of 12 hummingbirds, you could get just 12 battery packs. Um, and you can use rechargeable batteries in them if you want. I just get, I get Dollar Tree AA batteries and that seems to work just fine. <laughs> so, um, but uh, Heather or I too, do either of you guys have any other questions about how to upgrade your duos if you're interested? I guess um, one of the things that I question is some of the projects that I have in mind that I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, my biggest problem with this kit, and maybe I have misplaced it because I've had it for two years and I tried to use it last year and I did not do enough research with it before I did it. Um, I guess I don't, is there a place on the website that I haven't found that tells me what all of these things are and what they do? Yes. Because I'm like, I look at it and I'm like, I don't, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with those things. And I don't know that I yeah. found it, but the website has been totally upgraded since I have really. It's been, yeah, it. as of so, December I mean, I on it this year, year we, we so completely before. redid our website in December of, well, two years ago now. So about a year ago. And since then we've been adding to it constantly. So let me show you how to find exactly what you're asking about. Okay. So I went through and I selected Duo and uh, Mac and Scratch. So yeah. this would be something, or Windows and Scratch, though, are the same thing. Right. So if I go to this resources page, on the bottom here, this hardware guide, 
Let me just down, uh, okay. print that and show you what it, what it looks like. So the first page is just a labeled picture of the thing, great. But then there's like a teacher version of this. Let's see if I can zoom in. So it shows you a picture of the component. It answers what does it do. It tells you how to plug it in and it tells you what the icon on the board looks like. Okay. So a teacher version that has all the information that you just asked about. Plus, down beneath here, uh, on the, the third page, um, we actually made a student version as well. So when I was teaching with this in my after school program, I had made this for myself where I had a picture of the component, how to plug it in, but then I would have my students write what does it do in their own words. And so uh -huh. after we're learning to use the different components, they would fill in, you know, each day we would add a couple things to it. What is an LED and what does it do? What is a tricolor LED and what does that do? So this right. is a, a printable resource that you could either print out one of these and you know keep it with your kit, or this could also be a learning tool for your students as well. And then again, there's that labeled picture up top. Um, and just because I have you here real quick, yeah, absolutely. Um, is there like um, in these big orange kits that I have, mm -hmm. yeah. um, is there anything that I can do with like voicing things? Like if kids are going to record something, or is that just with the code that allows that to happen? Do I have to have any type of sensor? Um, it won't be a, a sensor. So there is a sound sensor on it. So uh, it doesn't record sound though. It just it just measures like sound levels. In the right. Room. However, if you're using Scratch to program, um, you can record sounds with your computer, and then right. you can That's through Scratch, um, you know, put that block in there of a recording, and it'll play through the computer, but it won't play through the humming. Right. Board. No. Right. Yeah. Um, and then what about like a light sensor? Uh, yep, you have a light sensor in yours. Kit? Yep, you have a light sensor in yours as well. It looks, uh, it's small and round, and, and I'll show you on that hardware guide, but it's small and round. Right. It's got a red, black, and yellow wire, and it's got a little squiggly line on the top of the, like on the face of the light sensor. Okay, I'll have to, my kids have them a mess, so. <laughs> And uh, a, a, another big change that you probably noticed between your duo kit and our bit kit is just this organization system here. Like this, this thing, this is one group's work. So like two to five students would work together on, with a hummingbird and with all of the components that go with it. I'll clean this up as we're talking actually. Um, and I think that this is like just a total revolution because like, it, oh yeah, it's a good idea to put everything together until you start working with an entire class and it becomes a snarl of wires. Oh, these right? orange are like, <laughs> they are a disaster. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we <laughs> fix it. But I look at it and you I'm like, also, I You can also just order this thing. Like you can order just the plastic thing. So if you wanted to, I think they're like 10 bucks or something. If you wanted to just order the plastic things so that you could organize it yourself. I don't know in the right. back here, there's like, we have a little shelving unit that we bolted to the wall where we can just yeah. slide these in and out. You can have your students, you know, put like, you know, Heather, Richard and Steven's group and they can tape their names across the top of it so that it, they keep their stuff together and they can work on it day after day and just come over and pick it up and then put it back when they're done. Um, right. But yeah, we find these, um, these kits just make it way easier for teachers to keep all those things straight. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'm so glad that you joined us, Heather, and that, um, yeah. that I was able to, to be here and answer some of your questions about Duo as well. Anything else that you're thinking of while you got me? Thanks. So. Not right now, though, but it was very helpful. Thank you. Wonderful. I'm so glad. Anybody else Thanks, have any Dad. other I'm glad to see your face and not just your hands? <laughs> 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 Anybody else have any other lingering questions? You can always uh, you can always email me, Kelsey at birdbraintechnologies.com. It's very easy to remember because that's who I am. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful night. It was really good that you were able to join us. All right, see ya. Thanks, so.